Previously on the bill. Talk about on screen charisma. Bitch. That wasn't charisma, mate. That was makeup. I ain't trying to bribe a cop or anything, but, you know, what have you been on the telly and everything? If you ever need a limo, give me a shout. First ride's free. That's good publicity for the company, you know? Okay, Diane. Yeah. But well, when you finished up there, get some statements from this lot. I want full descriptions of the two hijackers radioed into YBO. Okay. What happened? Lost some such. They definitely knew where they were going. One of them's left a footprint in the cement back there. Get CAC down in the photograph and then run a check on that car, find out where it's registered. Get your gloves out. Give that limb on the white side of the box. Morning, ladies. <laughs> I'm dressed up and I'm going to go. Now, I don't suppose any of you lot saw what happened to the driver. Yeah. Um, they pulled him out of the car and they gave him a right seeing to. Then they just drove off with us in the back. That's when I called you lot. Where was this? Over Marston's Wharf, um, down by the river. All right, well, let's get you down from there. Is this going to take long? Because we've got a pole dancing class at 11. Very nice. Josh? Ah. I think we'll continue this discussion back at Sun Hill. Thank you. Oh, Stuart. Yeah. Take a look at this, will you? The uniform was just attended a limousine hijacking. Keep me in the loop. Thanks, Jim. All right. And there were some drug rats found in the boot. Looks like cocaine. Mum, where's the slimmer now, then? Well, Sergeant Stoney's bringing it in, but be forewarned. And party's going in the back. And they're not best pleased. Well, thank goodness for TV's top copper, Diaz Turner of the Met. Where would those uniform gods be without him? I'm going in. Good luck. How many wraps did you find? 25 in the boot, two in the driver's side door. Looks like I can't. Okay, let's check with the labs to be sure. No word from the driver? Nah, all we know is that he was assaulted with the two hijackers took the car. Amazing, so he was about any. Already on. Who's this thing registered to? Will? Who's the car registered to? 
David Latham. 89 Ralph and Close. Nice. I'll get someone to give him a call, find out who's driving. Okay, I'm going to talk to these girls about these drugs actually belong to. You mind if I sit in? Give my team a heads up on who the hijackers are? <laughs> no, why not? Thank you, though. I don't believe how your team actually lost these people in the first place. So, do you remember the name of the driver, Siobhan? His name was Dave. He was a cute fella. Dark hair. <laughs> Fit body. <laughs> Nice smile. Oh, he had a wedding ring. That's all I can remember. What time did he pick you up? About half nine. Over Candice's on Maple's Lane. Right, where were you headed? Pole dancing. Not the West End for a boozy lunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so why did you go past Master's Wharf? I don't know. We just opened it to Kayla and Telly was on. Next thing, he's down on the pavement and them lads are giving him a proper kicking. Yeah. Sergeant Turner, my boy. So what can you tell me about those two lads who took the car? Early 20s, both white. One had a blue hoodie on, so I grabbed hold of it and I started choking him. But then he pushed me off, so I scratched his face. I even broke a nail. See? Where was this? Mm, posh block of flats. Montague. Montague Heights? That's it. Oh, God. Clever. <laughs> Um, how much longer is this going to be? Quite a while. We've got to get a CSE into a swab under your fingernail. Oh, no, but these are quite expensive. Is there an alternative? It's your bag. Yeah, a smile? Yeah. What about this? Oh, no, that I found under the seat. Oh, you found that under the seat. So you just put it in your bag, did you? No. I show it to the driver. It goes bright red. Says if you keep your gob shut, you can have it. Sean so, Doherty, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession of Class A drugs. Yeah, all right, OK. Yeah, listen, race dog, I don't care. Right, now, you've admitted to possession, so we'll have to speak to the CPS before we release you, all right? Her hen party is ruined. You know that. Well, with a bit of luck, you'll be out in time for the wedding. Excuse me, ladies. Thank you. Listen, I'm not interested. Listen, dream and shout at me all your life. We've done a quick Cozart test on the substance found on Siobhan, and yes, it is cocaine. All right, well, she's telling the truth. That means Dave Latham could be our dealer, right? Well, I checked St Hughes, and he didn't bother going to A&E. Nobody's picking up the phone at his house. So, Mum, do you mind if I borrow a few of your officers for a door-to-door -door at Montague Heights? Someone might have seen him go back there. I'll go. It's the obvious place to start chasing up those hijackers. Listen, so, no, keep me posted if you get anything on Latham, will you? Um, I might have to go to his address, too, Mum. I'm right on there. Well, my team's a bit stretched at the moment. I, I'll go down there myself, you know, I'll get told up. I need to get a statement from these rubble. Oh, rather you than me, Stuart. Yeah. P.C. Keen, would you like some fresh air? Yes, please. Sorry, Sylvie. Come on. Um, ladies. Hi. Um. What? This would appear to be the address. David and Danielle Latham, luxury touring. Oh, family business, then? Yes, that's on the website. Attractive couple. Mr. Latham, Sun Hill Police. Mrs. Latham? Sierra Oscar from 361, requesting ambulance to number 89 Brunel Avenue. Pregnant IC1 female, victim of assault. I'm going to do everything I can to help find whoever did this too, but I'm going to need your help, OK? I tried to shut the door, but he kicked open. My baby! Please stay with me. Yeah, of course, but we don't have to do this now. Where's Dave? I need him here. Yeah, we're going to find him. Now stay calm, all right? Please tell me what... Two six one from Sierra Oscar one. What's the situation there, Emma? We have the cordoning off the premises now, Mum. Over. OK, once you've made it secure... See if you can find any witnesses and then tell D.S. Turner Danny, the packer, kick the front door in, all right? If you need anything, let me know. Thank you. Understood. Over. Yes, Turner. Sorry to have to drag you away from one of those delightful ladies. <laughs> Inspector Gold's spoken to Mrs Latham. She says the attacker forced entry. There's a boot print on the door where he kicked in. All right. One of the attackers left the print of the building site, too, so maybe that's a match. Um, can you circulate this photo of David Latham? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, Sarge. 
first day he's beaten up, then his wife, this is starting to look coordinated. Yeah, where is he? He can call his wife, didn't get away any. Here's Dave's appointments book. I also found a list of clients on the computer. I've done a print out. Let's check through all that. Let's see how they actually. Oh, don't answer it. Let's see if they leave a message. David Pierce, where the hell are you and why aren't you answering your mobile, mate? Call me, okay? Pierce Halston, Beaumont Experiences. Sarge? She said when she took her dog out this morning, the limo was parked there outside those apartments. When she came back, it was gone. She doesn't know what happened to the driver? No. So where did he go? Well, at least we know where the limo was parked when it was hijacked. Might be able to get some stuff off that CCTV. Dodge, see how I work with the Chairman Residence Association. He reckons he saw someone fitting Latham's description get into a car this morning with a woman. What time? Approximately 11 o'clock, half hour after the limo was taken. Her name's Jules Raven. She lives up there in the penthouse suite. Very nice. So we can hand this on to the brains department or what? After all, it is their case. Oh, by rights we should, but time is of the essence and we wouldn't want to slow up progress, would we? You check out that CCTV, will Let's go and see how the other half live, Tony. Sorry about the wait. Been putting fires out all morning. Piers Houston. Don't worry about it, mate. Hi. Now, I'm uh, D.S. Turner from Sun Hills, my colleague D.C. Dassery. This is an event management firm, right? Actually, no more than that. Here at Beaumont, we think outside the box. We work closely with our clients on every detail of their event to make it into something unique, right down to the decor at the venue, to the interior of the chauffeur limousine. The only limit is your imagination. Yeah, and your budget. <laughs> so, Mandy said, do you have a question about limos? Actually, yes, we do, sir. Do you know Dave Latham? He's one of the reasons it's gone Pete Tongue in here today. He was supposed to do an airport pickup for us. He's left us with one very jet-lagged A-list celeb stranded. Dave Latham's limousine was stolen this morning. I see. Well, that explains it. Is he okay? Well, we don't know. He seems to have disappeared. As you can imagine, his wife is very concerned. I can get you a list of our other drivers. Maybe one of them can help. There's a lot of hang around at these gigs. They all tend to know each other. That'd be great, sir. Thank you. Mandy, could you get me a list of limo drivers? He's usually so reliable. Always on time, never gives the clients any grief. Pretty dependable sort of guy. If you hear from him, give us a call, yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Call again. Yeah, we'll do so. So I've got to make the limo business. I'm going to give him a call so he can do anything. What have you got up here, Mr. Raven? That's why I bought it. Sergeant. Stone. Callum. Stone. Excuse me, Sarge. See us 595 receiving. Of course, the problem here is vandalism. That's why I wasn't surprised when Mr... Um, sorry, what was his name? Latham. And Mr Latham told me what had happened. He looked very shaken up, poor man. When was this? I can tell you exactly. The courier arrived at 10.45. And he was by the front door when I went down to sign for my parcel. Why didn't you call the police? I wanted to. But he insisted that I didn't. And I told him the least I could do was take him to St Hughes. And when I dropped him off, I offered to go in with him, but he said he was fine on his own. Never yeah, checked. Never arrived. He hasn't been seen since. I knew I should have gone in with him. I hope he's all right, poor man. But he didn't say why he was here. Really, I wish I could be more help. Don't worry. We'll find him. Thanks for all your assistance. But if you do see him again, Give me a call. It'll be the first call I'll make, Sergeant. Right, right, right. Stu! Over here, mate! Yeah. Come on. Hey, where do you want this? I'll just put it down there, will you? Come on, pass it! Listen, <laughs> mate. You know Dave Latham? Dave? Yeah. He's a mate from the old Stepney, Dave. I see him this morning as it goes. Oh, oh, shut up, Corny, you're mad, ain't ya? It's a goal kick. Hey, mate, do you want to go and go for a minute? So let me get this straight, Trev. Dave asked if you could buy a couple of hundred quid, right? Yeah. Well, he was desperate. He left in a big hurry, too. So. Right, where was this? Oh, some little greasy spoon on Balance Street. Yeah, it's popular with the cabbies and the limo drivers. What's he been up to, anyway? Get out. cocaine. Who, Dave? No. But his wife's having a baby. No, his wife is in hospital because she got beaten up this morning. And his limousine was hijacked with almost 30 grams of cocaine in the back. 
Oh, I suppose it does fit. See, I've heard a rumour about someone using limos to deliver drugs to that trendy primrose set. You know, Dave's a lovely fella, but he's not exactly the brightest spark. All right, well, did he tell you anything else? Anything might give us some leads? No. Well, he just kept saying he wished he'd never got involved with us. Come on, Trev, back and go, mate. All right, I'll see you later, Stu. See you, man. How much longer is it going to be? Uh, did you like to wait in the shelves? No, I didn't think so. My name's Jules Raven. She works as a fashion PR over in Clarkenwell. Hello. 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 So, um, you interviewed Jules Raven yourself, did you? Yeah, I thought we'd better look into it in case Latham was still in her flat. Oh, well done, Sergeant. Oh, we'll look into it. But Will and I will look at the CCTV. I'll let you know if we find anything. OK, ladies, you can go. Except you, Siobhan, you've got a previous conviction that you should have told me about before. No! You can't do that! All right, it's Dave getting out the limo. The hijackers are waiting down here for him. Dave punches one of them, then the other one jumps on him. Then Siobhan gets out, lays into him, and scratches his face. Looks painful. Well, I reckon he got that cut when he fell down. It might be a lead we can chase out. Stop it there. Two men. Print it out when we're on a check on crimin. Good work, Will. Sarge, can I just show you one more thing, please? Now, Montague Heights sees quite a few limos coming and going, but this one caught my eye a couple of days ago. That's the woman from the penthouse. Jules Raven. Oh, she said she'd never met Dave. Cheeky man. What makes you so sure it's a woman we're looking for? Well, my informant thinks that Dave was regretting getting involved with some female and that that's somehow linked to using limousines to ferry cocaine around. Stuart? Yeah? We're looking through the CCTV and we've got a good visual on one of the hijackers. We think he might have injured his hand. We also found this. Oh, I thought Jules Raven didn't know Dave. That's what she told us, but he's been making regular trips there. In fact, there's been a lot of limos coming and going. Well, maybe it's Jules he's working for. Well, we explain what he was doing at Montague Heights. Maybe a drop-off. Yeah, when his stash was stolen, he panicked because he remembered he had to pay her back. I think it's time we paid Jules Raven a visit. Thanks, mate. Miss Raven, you told Sergeant Stone that Dave Latham was a stranger. Why did you lie? I, um, had my reasons. Did you also know that he dealt cocaine? What are you suggesting, D.S. Turner? I'm suggesting that he was working for you. Because our information is that limousines like this one are being used to deliver drugs. Uh, sorry, this is, um, quite personal. I think it's time you started telling the truth, Miss Raven. Because obstructing the police is a very serious matter. I really didn't want to go here. We've been seeing each other for about six months. You're having an affair with Dave Latham? I have um, <laughs> a terrible weakness for working men. I find him incredibly attractive. I still do. Yeah. Why didn't you tell us this before? For Danielle's sake, of course. When his limo was stolen, I had to help. I haven't done anything illegal, have I? All I did was give him a lift. Where did you give him a lift to? Miss Raven, you want us to verify your story, don't you? Well, Dave can do that. He keeps his limousine in a lock-up garage on Oxgate Street. I dropped him there. Thanks, Miss Raven. I'll deal with this. You can dance something and work on this timeline, will you? Them pictures all start looking the same after a bit. I know it's daft, but I've been talking to him. Stupid, yeah. No, no, it means you're staying positive. That's very good. Have you got kids, Inspector? No. Nope. I wanted them, but it just didn't happen. But I've got 23 little babies in uniform to buzz around. <laughs> Thought of a name yet? Sammy. After my dad. He died about four years ago. Dave's still missing, isn't he? You think this is serious? Listen, I can't stand much more of this, Inspector. There's something you're not telling me. We found cocaine in the boot of Dave's car.
Oh, but is it here? I always forgot to lock it. Dave Latham. Sunhill Police. Hey, listen, I wouldn't if I were you, mate. Hey, come. Dave, I'm here. Listen, listen, it's not about your limo, all right? It's about your wife. Danny, what's happened? She was attacked this morning. What about the baby? We don't know that yet, all right? We're waiting to find out. She's down in the hospital. Sarge. Yeah. Dave Latham, I'm arresting you for possession with intent to supply Class A drugs. I have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Come here. It may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. You warned me this would happen if I messed things up. Who did? Is that what this cash is all about, then? Got to pay him back for all the coke you lost today. Dave, if this man put your wife in hospital, why are you trying to protect him? <laughs> why do you think? He knows where we live. We're going to have to charge you with intent to supply. That's a five-year sentence. Do you really want to leave Danielle alone for all that time? I know from my head. <laughs> I've got to present Danny now. That's all that matters. <laughs> do what you've got to do. Charge me. Well, no, he's not saying anything. Cause someone's leaned on him, leaned on him hard, and he's scared about what they're going to do to Danielle. Well, we've got no choice if he's not going to talk. You're going to have to charge him to bail him out. That's so they called Dave Latham. Looks like it's 1-0 to CID. All right, my party this way. This bloke has been positively ID'd by Mrs Latham as her attacker. His name is Lloyd Carter and that's his address. A friendly looking fella, isn't he? Yep, let's go and get the baddie. Come on. He's definitely in there, Sarge. I've just seen him at the window. Might need an enforcer. Carter! Sunhill Police! Mr. Carter! Clear! That's one, Mark! Right. Do the honours, Tone. I think that's one all, don't you, Tone? Right. Exhibit OF1 of a footprint found at the Latham's house. This boot mark matches your boots, Mr. Carter, at time of arrest. The victim has identified you after looking at 192 photographs. Would you like to tell us what happened? She punched me in the face, that's what happened. She wanted me to be there, silly cow. All he said was mess the place up a bit. Who did? Yeah. Oh, come on, lawyer. We know someone put you up to this, so who was it? No comment. Look, you do the same, trust me. It's more than my life's worth. Well, this person's threatened to kill you. He'd do it too, or he'd pay someone. He's rich and vicious. Total psycho. I'd rather get put away for assault. Assault? Lloyd, oh, no, 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 no. You could be looking at manslaughter here. Yeah, or well, maybe even murder. See, Daniel Latham's pregnant, and if her baby dies, you killed him. Hold up. I, I ain't going down for murder. Okay, so help us. Tell us who paid you to do this. Give us a name, that's what we need. Halston. Here's Halston. See, that wasn't too hard, was it? So Latham works for this Pierce character? Yeah, he was booked to do a job for Beaumont Experiences this afternoon and the coat was in the limo when it was taken. Yeah, he had over a thousand pounds on him. We think he was trying to pay Piers off. So what does Latham make of all this? Well, he's not saying anything. We've got to charge him and release him. Inspector Gold's taking him to visit his wife now. OK, well, run me through it. All right. David Latham leaves his house at 8 a.m. He arrives at Maypitts Lane at 9.30 a.m. to pick up Javon and the hen girls. I mean, that's only a 15-minute journey. How come it took so long? Well, maybe that's where he picked the drugs up. No, because Danielle told us that the car was clean when he left the house. She told Inspector Gold that she cleaned it out herself this morning. All right, go on. Right, 10.15 a.m., Dave stops at Montague Heights to see this woman, Jules Raven. Now, she's admitted they're having an affair. Yeah, when he gets out of the car and he's attacked by these two men, one of which Sergeant Stone's now trying to trace. Now, they take the car and they dump it in the building site. Then, at 11.35, Lloyd Carter, he breaks in, attacks Danielle Latham. Now, he later told us that Pierce Houston paid him to do that. So when Pierce Houston realised his drugs had gone missing, he sent man Lloyd Carter to pick him up, yeah? So there's a gap between 8 and 9.30am. Where was Latham between leaving his house with an empty limo 
and picking these girls up stocked with cocaine. Now, if he did stop for drugs, we need to know where and from whom. Well, as well as the cocaine, we also found a hamper of food and a crate of champagne in the boot. Well, maybe it's in the same place. They sneak the drugs in with the champers. OK, Stuart and Grace, do a barcode check on the goods. See if you can find out where the distributors delivered it. Go. Mickey, can you draw up a list of firms associated with Pierce Halston? And maybe a connection. Well, you got the five, The first hijacker punches Dave. Dave punches back and he falls here. And then when he gets up, he's clutching his hand. So it could be a brake, sprain, or a cut? Yeah. Let's have a look. Sarge, what about this? Blood on it. Yeah, there's blood here as well, Sarge. Could have been a deep cut. Might have needed stitches. Tetanus jab. Slash down, scratch face. Let's check the hospitals. How is she? Well, she's still in shock. And she's angry, which is understandable. Have you told her about Jules? No, I haven't. But she does know that we've charged her with possession of cocaine. Come on. Danielle, what have I've got here? Your husband. They let you out then? It's all the court hearing. Are you pleading guilty? Don't, don't say you're sorry. You just make things worse. I'll find my mum. She's coming down. I'm going to stay at hers for a while. Honey, don't do this. I have to. I'm not going to lose my baby. That means I've got a rest. And it's the best place for both of us. Well, why don't you come home? I'll look after you. Because I don't want to, Dave. I'll call you when I feel like talking. I'm tired. I need to think. Come on. Let's do what she says. What's the deal? So, uh, four stitches on his right hand and a likely great scratch down the side of his face. Checked into A&E at about 12 o'clock. Sounds like our man. What's his name? Sean Hogan. He's a number 48. Okay, you two check upstairs, see if he's in. All right, fellas. What's the problem? Start the motor, stoop. Oh, I'll fix that for you. Just needs good clout. Yeah. Looks nasty. How'd you do that? Uh, could that work? Turn over. He's winning now, haven't it? Cheers, mate. That's all right, Sean. It is Sean, isn't it? Governor, I've been looking at the list of limo drivers Grace got from Piers. Yeah? Well, they use the same valet in firm. That's where the cars get prepped. And that's where Dave could have been this morning. We'll call him. See if they've seen Leighton this morning. Keep it casual. Tell them that Pierce is looking for him. It's what about the food hamper that we found in the limo? Right, it's from a gourmet wholesalers and it was delivered to a business address, uh, 31 Riverside Street. That's the valet infirm. Well, that could be where the drugs are stored. Well, right, well, I think we should start digging into Pierce Halston. Because if he is our dealer, we need to start building up a picture of what his operation's like, OK? In for a long night, then. Have a... No, no way, I'm too busy here. OK. All right, I'll meet you there. Oi. What are you trying to get me into? Just talk to him. No, I can't. Why not? Because he's already been charged. It could affect the trial and I'll be done for perverting the course of justice, all right? Well, if you take him straight down, and he's just going to clam up again, isn't he? Just listen to what he's got to say, that's all. Daniel's going to her mum's. You know, Dave's in bits. Listen, cheers, mate. This is completely against regulations. Well, so bend him a little. Who's gonna know? Hey, Dave. What's this all about? Well, Dave, tell him what you told me. The man you're after is Piers Halston. Oh. Oh, thanks for that, Dave. Yeah, I can go to prison for having this little sit down. Just tell me something about Dave. Hey, 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 hey. Just dear him out, will ya? About what happened to Danielle? Yeah, they came round looking for the coat. No, no, you don't get it. That's not the reason. The truth is, 
I've been skimming. What do you mean? The doctor in the coat walking right down. Half the punters can't tell the difference. I, I needed the money for my kid. Excuse me. Would you mind? It's my daughter. Thank you. Okay. But Pierre's found out. One of the clients must have complained. So that's why he sent Lloyd round, because he found out that you've been creaming off the top. Yeah. And if he finds out the rest, look what happened to Danny. Let me tell you the best way to deal with a guy like Piers. You help me bust him. I'm not a grass. I know, I know, man. Look, what Piers has done to you is bang out of order. Yeah. So this is what you do. You come down the station with me. You give a full statement. And you make this right for Danielle. Yes? Dave? All right. Good. Earlier today, you didn't want to talk to us. So why the sudden change of heart, Mr. Latham? I saw the state of my wife. I thought, nah. That guy's a slime ball. He deserves everything he gets. Fair enough. So tell us about this limo scam. Piers' mate runs a valeting firm on Riverside Street. I take the car in there and they tie it up. Disco lights, roulette wheels, champagne, depends on the punter. And the clients ask you for cocaine? The client gives Piers a code. And then how much they want is waiting for them under the seat when I pick them up. This morning I stuck the gear in the boot. I didn't want the girls finding anything. There was just a little job I did on the side. I must have left the wrap in there by accident. How many drivers has he got doing this? Listen, I don't know about that. We don't talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Well, there were other cars in there. Oh, yeah. As many as half a dozen. So tell us this code. Well, it changes. But right now, it's white Christmas. If we're going to raid this valeting firm, we need to make sure the coke's on the premises and there's a connection to Piers. Well, why don't we send someone down to Beaumont the Experiences to make a deal? If he takes the bait, then we can raid the valeting firm. You know, you think you'd swallow that? Yeah, the price is right. We'll make sure it is. Luke's gonna feed him the code word. He's gonna believe that this is on the level. He's an ex-city boy, isn't he? Yeah, he took redundancy from Hodges' bank about four years ago. Right, can you take Grice to do a racky of the valet shop? Neil, can you start planning the road? Yep. Mickey? Governor. What do you know about the banking world? Uh, a little bit. When I was at MIT, I did a big investigation into a dead Fordster. Why? I've got a job for you. Here's Houston. You asked to speak to me. Oh, yeah, Mickey Webb. I was hoping you could help me out with a bit of an emergency. I'll do my best. I've got a client flying in from Frankfurt. I wanted to organise a limousine to pick him up. Shame the town, take him out, but you know. Well, I see what I can do, but it's a busy time of year. Yeah, I do understand. It's just he's a really big investor. I wanted to make a good impression, you know. I want to pick him up from the airport in a taxi. Yeah, it'll be expensive, I'm afraid. Very short notice. Well, the gold card will have to take a batter in then. I mean, I think if I lose this deal, I'll probably lose my job at Hodges. Hodges Bank? Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine said you might be able to sort me out. Well, I'll see what I can do. Um, what, what time do you need it? He lands at the airport at 7 o'clock tonight. Right. Well, it looks like we might be able to help. Excellent. Um, any chance of chucking in a couple of bottles of champagne? The geezer likes to party hard. Yeah, no problem. Are we putting this on the account? No, I'll tell you what. I'll stick it on a plastic. I've hammered my account this month. Truth is, I was hoping for a bit of a white Christmas. Who did you say your friend from Hodges was? Paulie? Paul Levine? Oh, yeah, I know Paulie, yeah. Paul. Well, we do have uh, some artificial snow that we can add to the limousine. Fantastic. Decent gear? It's the best. How much would you like? Four grams? Oh, six grams, why not? You never know, I might get lucky. So when's the limo going to be ready? He's picking me up from his office at 6.30. He's keeping the place open for me. Well, that's good work, Mickey. I want you to stay there and watch him. I don't want him getting a tip off while we're raiding the valet firm. Now, when we've got the drugs, I'll let you know, and then you can make the arrest. And I'm going to send some backup over. Yeah, I got it. Neil, you're directing the raid on the valet firm. We've got a TSG team on the way over for the briefing. Now, Stuart, I want you to back up Mickey. I know you've worked hard on this, but he's out there on his own. And from what we've heard about this Piers guy, it can be dangerous. Right, we'll have the briefing in 20 minutes. 
So when TSG have secured the premises, myself and DC Dasri will lead the raid. The information that I gathered suggests that there's a small amount of cocaine hidden within the limousine. The, uh, the rest we expect to find within the premises itself. How protected is this place? So far there's no evidence of firearms, but they are violent. You all heard what happened to Danielle Latham this morning. We've got a Sunhill Ops channel for this operation, so make sure it's open at all times. Any more questions? Let's do it. car's not quite ready yet. It's being prepared now. Oh, sweet. Um, would you mind if I sit down, put my feet up? I've got a long night ahead of me. How about a quick libation, keep your night up? Yeah, yeah, nice one. Cheers. Mickey. Comrade, as a weapon. Frankfurt. We're at the Valentin firm. The limo's arrived. Nice one. You're playing on time, then? I'll look up. You must set the alarm properly, anyway. Prompt in the morning, please, Mandy. Yeah. Just make sure that folks on board. Yeah, yeah, I'm on to it. All sorted for the gear. All sorted. Yeah, yeah, all sorted. I'll put it this way, it will be snowing in London tonight. Wait for my signal. Oh, mate, nice one. Look forward to it. Bye. I worked at Hodges for a while. Yeah? Yeah. What, what section are you in? Corporate finance. Well, let's face it, that's where the big money is, you know. Yeah. Who recommended your promotion? Danny Brown. I get some eyes. Pierce is getting suspicious. We can't wait much longer. Mickey will handle it, go. Yeah in his own unique way. Here it comes. All units from 7-0, go, go, go. <laughs> Here's Halston. I'm arresting you for conspiracy to supply Class A drugs. You do not have to say anything. Oh. Wait, stop! Stop it! Hello, Piers. That's just bumping into you again. Come on, let's get a move on. You know what you're looking for. You better be here after all this. Go! Over here. Yeah. What is that? Very so good. We've been stitched up. You started Beaumont Experiences four years ago, is that right? Yes. I set it up with my redundancy. It's a pretty cutthroat business, isn't it? Hmm. We're keeping our heads above water. How are you doing that then, Piers? By dealing cocaine to your customers. Now showing Mr. Halston exhibit NM1. That's a bag of cocaine wraps taken from a black limousine, index 4986 Whiskey Foxtrot. It's not my limo, it's not my problem. All right, so are you denying offering cocaine to Mickey Webb earlier today? I thought we were talking about the weather. He obviously misunderstood. I have here a transcript of an interview taken with David Latham at 1610 this afternoon, in which he said, the client gives Piers a code, then how much he wants, it's then waiting for him under the seat. What's about Piers? Thought he wouldn't talk. Thought he'd be too scared. Also got a statement here from Lloyd Carter. Do you want me to read that to you? That was a mistake. I told him not to hurt anyone. Oh, but he did. 
That's a pretty impressive child sheet you got there, Piers. It was a way into the market, that's all. I was the new kid on the block. It was a novelty thing. I swear, I'm not a big dealer. I'm not. Please. You've got to believe me. Okay. Do you understand the terms of your caution? Duh. Do you think I'm thick? No, Six I'm... hours I've been in here. I may as well be wearing a uniform. Can you chat that, please, Pat? I don't need some boys' limo. It's not like I nicked the crown jewels. All right, listen, it's been very helpful today, all right? It's going to stand you in good stead. You might only get 12 months. By that time, she'll have divorced me. I haven't even told her about Jules yet. That would be the end. Well, you made that mistake when you started the affair with her, didn't you? An affair? Is that what she said? It was once, that's all. But me and Danny had had a row. Jules did this big sympathy number. We ended up in bed together. I just... I messed up. Well, it's, uh, what are you doing around there this afternoon, then? Let's see. Have a seat. Listen, are you skimming for jewels? Huh? Shaving the coke was her idea. She's a massive cokehead, man. She said if I didn't do it for her, she told Danny about us. I swear, dear to her, it's the truth. She's used me. I should have done when it happened. Right. I only told Danny the truth. Ooh, two good colours today, Sergeant Stone. A gold star for you. Not for you. Sorry. I thought we were talking kilos here. That's what DS Turner said. Final score, 2-1. And uniform lift the trophy! And, um, it's not really a competition. I'm going to sit you to see your wife, Mr Latham. I can give you a lift. Uh, Mum, would you mind giving us a minute? Thanks. Yeah. I wish I'd never met her. Here's what you do, right? You see your wife, you don't tell her about jewels, right? You mean it. You're not Danny, don't you? More than anything. Good. So don't argue with me. Don't tell her about Jules. I'll deal with her. All right, trust me. Go. I assume Dave told you this. No, he didn't need to. Actually, Dave's a pretty decent bloke. He's just been used, that's all. And he's not smart enough to think of a scam like skimming cocaine on his own. I'll take that as a compliment, shall I? Of course, I'll deny it. Yeah, of course you will. Yes, his wife that I feel sorry for. You know she's pregnant. No, no, I didn't. For her. Yeah. Is that uh, this month? No, it's a, a oh. proof that. What's this? Free sample. You know, Miss Raven, it seems to me that we can do this one of two ways. Either I can take you down to the station, I can charge you with this. Or. Or we can agree to keep your relationship with Dave Latham private. Get yourself some rehab and maybe I'll make this disappear. Sounds like an agreeable proposition to me. Yeah. Shall we have a little drink on it, dears Turner? <sighs> See myself out. Why do I sign this? At the top of the statement and at the bottom. If it was you, would you forgive him? Well, he knows he's made a terrible mistake, but he is trying to make things right. It's not what I asked you. Could you? Be honest. Well, I'm no expert on relationships, you know, but I think I would listen to what he had to say. Because your baby needs a father. Dave needs you. You mean I could do a lot worse? <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I suppose you're all looking for the perfect partner, but I don't think they exist. Where is he, then? Your court appearance is Tuesday morning, and don't forget. I'll be there. You better be. You take care of yourself, young lady. Thank you, Inspector. How old are you, Sean? 21? 22? Bit old for joy riding, isn't it? Nice set of wheels. Never drove one before. Them girls in the back were great crack, screaming like banshees they were. You just took a shine to it. That's what you're saying. What were you doing over at Montague Heights? You live on Humber Street. That's the other side of town. It was, uh... It was visiting to me. Yeah? What's their name? What's it to you? 
Just charge us and let us go, will you? Someone paid you to do this, didn't they, Sean? They told you when and where, you had a few quid in your pocket and you took the day off work, that's what happened. So who was it, Sean? I don't know. Don't give me that! Honestly, I don't know. He said he was the postman. <laughs> that's wicked, eh? The postman. I love it. <laughs> Maybe it's his idea of a duel, but there's definitely somebody else behind it. And whoever it is, they're smart, because they managed to take out the opposition for the price of a Jack Limo. I don't like being used, Neil. What's happened? Well, apparently those hijackers were working for someone. Someone called the postman who wanted peers out of the way. And we've just obliged. Nice. Come on, mate. You going my way? Ah, oh, it's an old man. I don't know where I'm going, to be honest. I'm just walking. What's wrong? You should be made up. You've got a result for peers and we sort your day out. No bones broken. Not a bad day, all in all. You fancy a drink? On me. You know what, mate? I do. Time on the bill. Think I'm a hooker, so I must be a junkie. What is this? I don't want any trouble, all right? I want to find this little girl. Put the can down! Ah! No one's ever proved the existence of the postman. What about the male victim? Well, he's slightly battered and bruised. Got a name. 